Okay, here we are today at the protest against the military spending in the budget. Uh, we're out at uh, Jim Chalmers' office at Logan Central, and he is uh, the treasurer who'll be presenting the budget, which includes an extraordinary expense on nuclear submarines at the behest of the United States and British governments. So there's a good roll up here today of people from a variety of organisations, including an independent and peaceful Australian network, Just Peace. Um, there's people from the Vintage Reds. Um, there's also people from the general anti-war movement from way back. It's so very good. We're going to go in today and present a letter to Chalmers um, expressing our views that it's not a good thing to be spending money on expensive submarines while public housing is at such a low level in Australia and so little money has been spent on public housing at a time of economic crisis. There we go. Come on out here if you have a chance. We're at Logan Central Station, just near the the um, the Logan Central Plaza. We're on Wembley Road. If you want, to, if you're around, come out here and have a look at what's been going on here. Hey, what are we here for? <laughs> What about public housing? <laughs> Very good. That is excellent. The retired unionists are here. That's right. Why do we have them anyway? $368 billion for eight subs. Are any of them ever going to function? I don't think so. But we get very little money spent on public housing. Let people live their lives in peace. Dismantle the ASP. No nukes. Oh, that's right. We don't want nuclear war, especially with China. <laughs> <laughs> Is there going to be a war with China? And what's what, what's what's making them want to push for this? They profit greatly from they can sell their ammunition. So a war always seeks the military economy. And war and war profiteers. Do you think they'd be a bit afraid of going to war with China given what has happened in the Ukraine? It went pretty bad, didn't it? Yeah, except investments in things like fossil fuel increased in profits and investments increased in armaments, but it went down in renewables. <laughs> Why okay. are we worried about China going to war? It's only the, UK, the USA that has invaded other countries since World War II, not China. China is not our enemy. And also you say we're going to defend the rules-based international order. Well, which countries invaded Iraq? It was Britain, Australia and the USA. They are the countries that don't follow the rules-based international order. Um, 
Yeah, it's just laughable that they talk about uh, defending the rights of sovereign countries. What about Iraq? What about the torture that they did in Iraq? Guantanamo Bay, Abu Ghraib, those places. Then they pushed NATO right up to the edge of Russia, uh, which provoked Russia for war. And now, who's paying the price of the Ukrainians? The Ukrainians are dying because uh, America wants to and wants to uh, bring Russia down. And they'll do the same thing with China. All China wants is its own bit of Taiwan back that 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 the capitalists ran to at the end of the Second World War. That's all they want. They want that back. But USA cannot bear the thought that another country is building a huge military at the same time as they're raising the standard of living of their own people, at the same time as the USA is pushing down the standard of living of their own people. So what do they do? They'll provoke a war with Taiwan, so China uh, will, will react, and who will be? We'll be like Ukraine. We'll be on the front line. It will be Pine Gap and Tyndall and all those places that hold USA bases that are going to be attacked by the China if that happens because Amer because America is too far away. Oh, this has got a bit too hard. We'll just pull out like we did in Afghanistan and and uh, and and they they start wars and then pull out because they can't win. But we'll be on we'll be on the front line. So what we've got to do is disengage with the USA. And and the other thing is we're gonna we're gonna end up part of the AUKUS deal is that we end up with all the nuclear waste, not only our subs that we're going to make, but also English and American. Because they've got nuclear waste sitting around in decommissioned submarines in waters in, in waters near their place. They don't know what to do with it because no one wants it. But we're going to be the bunnies who get it. And the bunnies that are going to get it are the Aboriginal people, their land, probably at Maralinga or something mm. like that. We don't want this high grade enriched uranium. If you want a nuclear sub, get the low level nu nuclear, nuclear sub. But honestly, we've got to disengage with the USA. And the only way we're going to make that happen is Morris got us got it into it, and now we've got a job that prevents part of him. He's deal for getting us into it. He's got himself a prime job with some uh, military organisation. These guys are on the same uh, track. So we've got a next gen next election getting more progressive people and more like more greens and more teals. And we got out of the French one, so we'll get out of this one. We'll get out of it before it costs us three hundred sixty eight billion. It might cost us a few billion, but get out of it and make our own submarines. Okay. Okay. On the submarine question, former Labor Prime Minister Paul Keating in opposition to the submarines, said the Australian government is being run by the spooks. Now, why do we have this Labor government, this bunch of Labor people, suddenly really going all out with the US in this warmongering kind of budget that they're bringing down? What, what's different about this mob? Is this mob is paid for by defence, by uh, uh, arms manufacturers. Most of the people who are making the decisions are old, retired US uh, generals. And so they've enmeshed us. And I, I don't know, we're, we're too scared to say, sorry, God, we, you know, we don't, we, we, we want to have our, have our own sovereign. I don't think, I don't know what they've got over them. I don't, but they're too scared to do any of that. Okay, very good. Thank you. We've got a few people listening out there. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we're out here at Jim Chalmers' office. He's the member for Rankin. He's the Labor Treasurer. He'll be presenting this budget, which we disagree with, because they're spending too much money on military and not enough on social housing, not enough on Education, not enough on hospitals. We want a more social democratic government, not one that's a warmonger. Anyone else got anything else to add? 
<laughs> Very good. What about you, Michael? Well, I'm, I'm a, a member of the Australian Labor Party, and some people uh, think they've been brainwashed the leadership of the ALP. It's much worse than that, in my opinion. I think they've been, the, the whole body's been snatched, and I think it's been snatched by the Americans. If they're going to fight a war against China, because they've only ever fought wars against little, small countries, if they're going to seriously fight against China, they're going to exert enormous pressure on Australia to, to come up with money to fund the, the attack submarines, um, which will be undoubtedly obsolete uh, by the time anything happens in, in 20 years, so, for example. Um, and maybe, maybe we should spend that $368 billion and send it across to America as soon as possible while the exchange rate is good, because that's the way we'll buy how many joking things. Because that's the way we'll get our bang for the buck if we if we've actually decided to do that. Um, we can't wait until it's it, uh, the Australian dollar is worthless or a lot lower. But um, that's that's only a joke, of course. But uh, I don't think we should, we should redirect that three sixty eight billion dollars to other other things. I've actually got a, a, a sign here calculating um, to spend that three sixty eight dollars to build a, a, a defence, a D E F E N C E defence, which is a, a wall around the whole of Australia. Again, this, uh, this is not particularly serious. You can build a a wall around Australia of cinder blocks, which is two hundred metres tall, for for less than three hundred sixty eight billion dollars. Well. That's almost 40,000 kilometres around the edge of Australia. And that will keep, keep out uh, a, lot of, a lot of immigrants, for example, and refugees from, from the coming climate change wars, which are going to hit um, eventually. Um, and the way Australia is going, it doesn't want any of these refugees. It doesn't have a clue about how, how the effect of, the, of climate change is going to affect the, the number of refugees throughout the world and they may want to come to Australia. Well, this this uh, 200 metre tall wall will keep them all out. Um, I, I have a an idea that we, there's, a, there's a common talk about um, zero emissions by 2050. We should say, joke, I'm joking here, we should say um, zero admissions by 2050. Zero admissions of climate refugees because Australia has got a terrible reputation in regard to trying to stand up to refugee treaties throughout the world. It's, it's absolutely horrible, atrocious. But a lot of these refugees are being kept in um, concentration camps, essentially, for years at a time. Um, so maybe maybe the government of Australia, its racist government, is saying uh, zero, zero admissions by 2050. If it, if it said that, it would have some sort of clue about the importance of climate change, how it affects not only the whole world, but Australia in particular, of course. And that's going to also influ influence the, um, these submarines and all the preparations for war. It's going to go, it's going to go to hell in a handbasket because of climate change in any case. And in my opinion, we're doing almost nothing for climate change, and reducing emissions is, is a good first step. But that's it, it, it's probably, in my opinion, too late to to start reducing emissions by the end of this this year. You may have stopped emissions, and then it will start. We'll start getting some control over the climate. But controlling the climate and the whole of the Earth is a massive undertaking, and there's no no way in which we I've seen cooperation amongst uh, countries to really get together and address this issue. Recently at the uh, Bayside Bowls Club that my brother attends, there was a discussion about the possible war with China and my brother just asked a whole bunch of bowlers, do you think there's going to be a war with China? And they just all, these are just ordinary folk, right? They just all laughed. They said, no way are we no going to be, we don't. So 
is this democratic, what they're doing? If, if that is the view of most people, what, what are they... What do they think, you know, that do they think they're going to get re-elected on the basis of sending $368 billion on a submarine? In the recent May Day march, there were the, the, the branch of the ALP, the, 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 the Queensland branch, marched down at the end of the march and one lone voice said, no submarines more public housing. It was just one lone voice just chanting that out. And the Labor Party people in the march, they cast their eyes down in shame and looked away. They don't even believe it's a good idea. No, they don't. In fact, you know, I belong to a, a fairly progressive left-wing branch. that don't like to use the left-wing, but they're, they can see clearly that uh, spending that astronomical amount. I don't know where this $368 billion comes from to some sort of you know, dollar amount they've got out of the sky, it seems to me. In any case, these things double and treble in cost, overruns. It's just a, we're looking at a trillion dollars more, like, more, more likely eventually. Well, it but, looks like they're going in now. Okay. I'm going to go and record the uh, presentation of the letter. Yeah, Thank right. you very much for that. Thank very you. interesting. From right. A voice from... What, which Labor branch did you say? Yes, we call it the KGB. Uh, it, it stands for Kelvin Grove branch, but it's really Kelvin Grove Newmarket branch. They've they got a lot of good members at that branch, I know. They're very good. Thanks a lot, Michael. Thanks a lot, Ian.